Okay, good morning or afternoon, depending on where you're calling from. I am Dr. Joanne Yanez. I'm the Executive Director for the Association of Accredited Naturopathic Medical Colleges, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So with us, we have Dr. Danielle Lockwood. She is a primary care uh, naturopathic physician and owner of Terrain Wellness in Portland, Oregon. Uh, very excited to have her with us. Uh, Dr. Lockwood, if you can go to the next slide. So um, just a couple of housekeeping things. We, uh, this, you all will be in listen only mode. So uh, if you have any questions, please use the Q and A box. Um, and, uh, and so please use the Q and A for all questions. And the forum is going to be recorded and we will send the link out when it's ready. If you do have any questions, either about the content of this or about something else, feel free to always email us at info at AANMC. Um, and so I am really happy to have Dr. Lockwood with us. Uh, before attending naturopathic school at NUNM, she completed a bachelor's in dental hygiene and was a faculty member at her undergraduate uh, alma mater, USC School of Dentistry. She balances her passion for natural health by being a student of every patient she treats. Uh, her patients appreciate her expertise while also addressing emotional components. Uh, so she, she works with a diverse range of patients and conditions, including brain injury, addiction, emotional disorders, uh, GI issues, pain, and so on. Um, and so uh, I'm very, very happy to have her. Uh, she is to have her with us today. Uh, and so with that, I'm gonna make myself go away and we can start on the webinar. So thank you, Dr. Lockwood for joining us. Thanks, Dr. Yanez. I really appreciate your introduction and I appreciate AANMC having me today. I'm so excited to be here and talk to you about a few things. Just a few, you know, I think it's always important to get to know the person who's talking. My story, um, as Dr. Yanez says, I practiced dental hygiene for six years before deciding to go back to school. Originally, I was going to go to dental school but I ended up interviewing for dental school and described a holistic patient-centered practice. And I thought, hmm, maybe there's more. Um, I was the first woman to go to college in my family um, and the second person in my family to be a doctor. My uncle who went back when he was older in his late thirties, he actually is a veterinarian now. So I'm only the second person to complete that, that path. Um, before I decided to go back to school, I started to study meditation. This was because I was suffering from really debilitating panic attacks. And I started teaching meditation to women to help with anxiety. And then it just started to open me up more and more about this possibility. Um, I'm a constant student, so it doesn't end after becoming a doctor. I actually feels like this is where it started. I decided to go to NUNM, which when I went to school, it was called NCNM, which is in Portland, Oregon. It's the oldest uh, accredited naturopathic medical school in the US. And while I was there, I doubled down on things like Toastmasters and student government and Leaders by Choice was an organization that I formed while I was there, which focused on mentor, peer-to-peer -peer mentorship, and then doctors mentoring students while they were in schools. So that was really good. Um, I've got two kiddos. I've got a six-year-old son and a one-year-old daughter. I have a wonderful husband named Richard and I'm the owner of Terrain Wellness in Portland, Oregon. And mostly I love business. I love getting better at business. I love helping people through business. I love using our business as a vehicle to reach more people. And that's a little bit about me. So let's talk about this idea of colds, flus, and seasonal infective, uh, affective disorder, and what is the connection? So why do people get more sick in the winter? What are, what are a few things about that? First of all, I'm just gonna give it to you briefly. We spend more time indoors, so we're more susceptible to uh, you know, getting infection because viruses and bacteria thrive in colder, damper climates and weather. And we also have worse habits <laughs> for health in the winter, which we'll talk about, I'll describe in a second. Let's talk about seasonal affective disorder. Seasonal affective disorder is also known as the winter flu, and it's abbreviated as SAD, which is easier than saying seasonal affective disorder over and over. 
And what it's going to be noted by, it's not, it doesn't just happen in the winter, which is something that I learned when I was in school. It's not just in the winter, but it's very common in the winter. There's another portion of it that can actually happen in the summer. So in the winter, when we see seasonal affective disorder, we'll see things like oversleeping, which is also known as hyperinsomnia, overeating, particularly craving carbohydrates and all those comfort foods. Like we just had Thanksgiving. So I know pie and, and stuffing and all those carbs were, were definitely craved. We love that comfort food in the winter. Uh, we'll get more weight gain in the winter. Um, and we'll have more social withdrawal. Like we're like almost this feeling like we're hibernating all the time. That's seasonal affective disorder. Specific symptoms for the summer pattern would be trouble sleeping, which is more of that insomnia pattern that we see poor appetite leading to weight loss, restlessness and agitation, anxiety, and then sometimes episodes of violent behavior. So getting that sun back is, is sometimes just as bad as having that sun go away or that light go away. So we're going to move on to the next slide, except it, there we go. Okay. So I want to just take a second and talk about the, the gut brain issue. I first have to back up and tell you about something called the microbiome. So if you can see this picture, this guy's head is made up of all these little bugs because our body is just a bunch of systems made up of, of a bunch of bugs. We're, we're very much made up a bunch of a bacteria that needs to be in balance within the body. And the microbiome is actually thought to be its own separate organ system. Your gut can actually communicate directly with the brain and your gut also communicates directly with your immune system, which we're going to talk about in a little bit of detail coming up next. And so alterations in your gut health have widespread consequences, not just for your immune system, but for your brain as well. Oops, one more back. Okay, so let's connect the dots. We have the gut, we have the immune system, we have neurotransmitters, which are tiny peptides that communicate with the brain. You might've heard things like GABA or serotonin or dopamine. Those are all neurotransmitters and we have vitamin D. So let's connect it. First of all, 70% of your immune system is in the gut. I know when I found that out, I was like, whoa, that is a lot of percentages. <laughs> um, it's associated with something called, which I, I love this word. I don't know why, but when I learned this in medical school, I was like, I love this word. Gut associated lymphoid tissue, also known as GALT. I don't know. Maybe it just reminded me of like malt, like a milkshake or something like that. But GALT is this lymphoid tissue that's lining your gut and having direct communication between what your brain is supposed to do and your body and your nervous system and all these things. Bacteria in the gut can actually tell your immune system what to do and how it needs to act. And, and I find this absolutely fascinating. And then certain bacteria, specifically spore-based bacteria. So there's some, some products that we use that contain what are called spore-based bacteria have actually shown to help retrain your immune system and strengthen your immune system, which is super, super cool. And then we can start to see once that, once that's happening and that repair is happening, we can start to repair things within the body, strengthen that immune system. So this is a huge, huge focus when we have a patient coming in with an autoimmune disease or somebody who's getting chronic infections, colds and flus, and just kind of everything. We really have to double down on focusing on the gut. And then neurotransmitters, the chemicals that control your mood are used by the central nervous system are made in the gut. And this part of the nervous system of your gut is called the enteric nervous system. So this is actually the connection between the gut and the brain and the nervous system. And there's some people who will actually call your gut, your second brain. So it, it can produce things again, like serotonin. In fact, 
there's a study that showed that more than 30 neurotransmitters um, make up your, your, are found in your enteric nervous system or the nervous system that is in your gut. And that 95% of your body's serotonin is found in your bowels, which is just crazy. Like, so this is why we're starting to see patients will come in, they're on an antidepressant. They might have some serious gut issues as well, because they, they work hand in hand with each other. So let's see, um, gut bacteria, there's research. Okay. So gut bacteria both produce and respond to the same neurochemicals, such as GABA, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine that your brain uses. So they, they can easily respond in your gut and then they will communicate up to your brain. So finally, let's talk about vitamin D. So vitamin D processing, the actual processing of it requires a healthy gut. Vitamin D needs healthy gut bacteria. Vitamin D actually helps with calcium absorption, which we've heard of, but you may not know that it also helps restore healthy gut lining. So not only is you need a healthy gut to make vitamin D, but you also need vitamin D to help repair the gut. So this is something I check very frequently on my patients and making sure that they have optimal vitamin D levels. Um, so what we also would want to look at is that there's something vitamin D makes. I'm, I'm sorry. I am like such a science nerd. So I love this stuff. This is all based on research and the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency. We have about 1 billion people worldwide have vitamin D deficiency and 50% of the population has a vitamin D insufficiency. So Almost everybody that I test for vitamin D levels, which is usually through a blood test, will show that they're very, very low in vitamin D and they need to be supplemented. So what would be a healthy level that we would look for? We actually like to see it higher because we're looking for an optimal range. Many patients who are coming in have had things like brain injury, chronic headaches, autoimmune diseases. So we want to see that level between 70 and 100, which is a lot higher than even what would be considered like a normal lab range. Um, but most people are coming in with vitamin D levels in the twenties, in the tens and the teens. So we're, we're seeing some serious vitamin D deficiency and vitamin D deficiency has been shown through the research to lower risk and complications of illnesses. So vitamin D helps your macrophages, which is are, have you guys ever seen Pac-Man where <laughs> They're going to eat all the dots. Dr. Yanez said this shirt looks like it's from the 80s. I am a child of the 80s. So I will say that I love analogies. And one of the ones that I was thinking of was a macrophage is similar to like a Pac-Man eating those little dots. Those little dots in this case, your immune system would be viruses, invaders, bacteria that need to happen. So vitamin D releases a substance that actually helps those macrophages work better and gobble up better. And it also helps your body lower that cytokine response, which is like a hyper inflammatory response. So vitamin D is really, really important at helping be the gas pedal and the brake system within your immune system. Okay. So like I said, in my first slide, I am also an acupuncturist. I did a dual degree where I simultaneously did my doctorate in naturopathic medicine and a master's degree in acupuncture. So I love bringing in the perspective of Chinese medicine. And they say winter is actually the highest point of yin. And yin is really about the stillness and the calmness and inner reflection. It's represented by the season of water. So water is the element that it's represented by. The kidney is the organ. The color is black and the emotion is fear. So let's keep that in mind when we, whenever we get into the winter, we're programmed biologically to sort of be in this state where we want to be more restful. So recommending going to bed earlier, sleeping a little bit later, if you can, moving a little bit slower, eating foods that are warm, you know, shying away more from those cold raw foods and getting cooked soups and stews and 
warm foods for the body, and then focusing on foods that are seasonal, eating foods that are seasonal, especially if they're local to your region, they're growing in the same environment as you. So they have different vitamins and minerals than they even do on another part of the season. So trying to eat, like we eat local apples, local pears this time of year, root vegetables. We really try to get local as much as possible because they have the vitamins and minerals that I need because I'm living in this environment. And then being in dim lights and darkness a little bit earlier, the advent of the light bulb was, was not good for us because it helps us stay up so much longer. And then of course we've got blue light and all the stuff coming from computers and things like that. Simple, wearing warm clothing, but Chinese medicine is really big on covering the back of our necks. And acupuncture, they taught us that the pathogen invasion will actually happen in the back of the neck. So I'm a huge advocate for wearing you know, I have a lot of like turtlenecks and scarves and I wear this vest all the time that, you know, goes up to my, goes up to my neck. That's, that, that is the Chinese part of me. So we'll get in a little bit. We have, we're seeing what makes us more susceptible to these colds and flus is all work and no rest. We're eating more of an inflammatory diet as a population. We're seeing a lot of overuse of drugs and antibiotics, which are really destructive to that gut microbiome that we talked about earlier. We have a lot of toxic exposures, uh, chronic digestive dysfunction. So going back to that gut health, almost everybody who comes and sees us has some sort of constipation, diarrhea, heartburn, gas, bloating. So we get lots of details about that. And then vitamin deficiencies, not just vitamin D, but other ones like selenium, zinc, trace minerals, magnesium is a huge deficiency. B vitamins is a huge deficiency. These are all needed for repair within our body. And then of course, something that we focus on here at our office is unprocessed emotional trauma. I don't think I realized this until, you know, I shared with you, I went through a lot of panic and anxiety. And it wasn't until I learned meditation and I started learning to how to physically process the trauma through my body. It's like almost like I was holding on to it. So this is something that we focus on with almost every one of our patients is how to process trauma, how to process stress, how to, how to complete that stress cycle so they can get on the other side of it. And then just a note, it's all about healthy terrain. So the name of my clinic is terrain wellness. And it really came from this idea that we can create a body that is resilient, that can stand up to lots of things, as long as we give it what it needs. And it's all about that terrain. It's all about the landscape of your body, making it strong. Just like when you have a garden, you don't want a bunch of weeds there. So you put plants and thing, make the soil a certain way so that those particular plants don't grow there. And toxins, toxins can be anything from chemicals, pesticides, heavy metals, but it can also be lotions and artificial fragrances where our bodies are constantly bombarded by these things in a modern world. So some tips, some tips to stay healthy and to stabilize your mood in the winter. Move your body every day. I just read a study that said 11 minutes of movement can counteract the damage from sitting all day at the desk, 11 minutes. So this is something I say to my patients, move your body intentionally every day. Now, some people are like, well, I get up from the desk to get a drink of water. Yes, you need to do that. But having time to breathe, to without a mask on, hide somewhere where you're not <laughs> around somebody else, move your body intentionally. I really try to make a point of doing that right before I got on this webinar with you. I did yoga in my office 20 minutes. So I have a little app on my phone and I'll move my body intentionally every day. Optimize your vitamin D levels. We just talked about before how vitamin D is just everywhere and we need it for so many things. So Go see your doctor, get your, get your blood test, check your vitamin D levels, make sure it's optimized. Optimize your gut, optimize B vitamin levels. Again, these are used for DNA repair. They're used for energy. They're used for so many things in the body. One of the 
one of the first things that I do with people just to get them out of that hole because they're coming in with so many things is replete their vitamins and minerals. Um, address underlying itch, issues such as anemia. Anemia ju isn't just about iron, which is also really important for the immune system, but it is about those B, B vitamins. It is about B6. It is about folic acid or folate. Um, plan a vacation in a sunny place. I am here in the Pacific Northwest. It is very gray and very cloudy for most of the year. And it is really important for me to go and have some sunshine. So I usually try to plan this year. We might just drive to Bend, which is about two hours away, but it's more, it's much more sunny there over those mountains and uh, get a vacation, you know, in February, which is good. Get light exposure, get a full spectrum lamp, wake up to it first thing in the morning, get light in your eyes. This is really good for your immune system because it gives signals to your immune system to do the thing that it's supposed to do. Um, eat seasonal colorful foods, but like we talked about, find a, a store or a farmer's market that sells foods that are local to your area and eat seasonally. Get plenty of rest, get the lights out early. I am such an advocate for starting to dim the lights. I have a whole like hour long, my husband and I bedtime routine of stretching and getting the lights dimmed and starting to relax our bodies and use the winter to do your inner reflection. This is a wonderful time of year for journaling. You know, I'll sip a cup of tea in the morning. I'll write down anything that I need to let go because this is the season to process fear and grief, according to Chinese medicine. And it's the time to slow down. Summer is when we are supposed to expend our energy and sweat and move and get outside. And winter is really that time that we want to relax and rest. Um, let's see, what else? I feel like I had another thing uh, before my case. I might've missed one slide. We talked about that, yeah. Um, I have a case here. So we'll talk about a case and then we can talk about some strategies as well. I do want to say, really want to be careful about that gut health and just what you're consuming. So this is where we get into inflammatory foods and all of that. And we'll talk about it through this case here. So this case is a, a patient of mine. She's been seeing me for a few years now, 50 year old female. She came in with severe seasonal allergies. I mean, she was taking every over-the-counter seasonal allergy medication you can imagine. And she was getting a prescription for Sudafed, like actual real Sudafed. Um, the, uh, I think I've got something up on my screen. Okay. Um, so she had chronic infections, lots of swollen lymph nodes. Uh, exhaustion. She was very exhausted and she had metabolic syndrome and all the stuff that included. So her thyroid was out of whack, but not quite to the point where she needed thyroid medication. Her blood sugar was kind of up and down, but not quite to the point where she needed medication. She was having problems losing weight. She just felt really sluggish and like inflamed. She kept getting pancreatitis attacks. So her pancreas would flare up and then she would stop eating. And she had, you know, ended up in the hospital a few times for it. And then she had a mix of anxiety and depression. And this is who came to see me right in the door. This is a very typical type of picture that naturopathic doctors will see. So pertinent labs, some of these, if you're a doc, this may make sense to you, or if you're really into researching, this will make sense to you, but I'll, I'll kind of explain it. So she had a combination of high MCD, which you'll find on a blood panel, regular blood panel and high RDW. These will indicate that there is some sort of B vitamin deficiency in the body. She had an overall picture of her immune system being taxed. So we would see that in this pattern, low white blood cells, high lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are, um, show that you've been chronically exposed or exposed to a virus, uh, low neutrophils. So this is, these are kind of our first line of attack. And so when those are low, it means that the infection has sort of gone into a chronic state and it's just lingering for a high amount of time. She also had high homocysteine. High homocysteine is also an indicator of B12 deficiency as well as magnesium, zinc, and some of these other cofactors. 
and also put her at risk for a cardiovascular event like a heart attack. She had a combination of low iron and high ferritin. So low iron in the blood is kind of like a conventional doc might just run an iron and say, oh, well, wow, your iron is really low. Like, let me start supplementing with you with your iron. And that's problematic because if you have too much iron in the system, it can really cause a lot of inflammation and a lot of problems. And the truth is she had a lot of iron in the system. It was just being stored up. So ferritin is actually the storage form of iron. And so we see this pattern of low iron where it's not getting into the blood because the blood isn't being turned over quick enough because you don't have enough B vitamins and high iron. And this leads to a lot of inflammation in the body. She also has low TSH, which is a thyroid stimulating hormone, which if you just look at TSH, you'd go, wow, she's hyperthyroid, even though she didn't have any signs of hyperthyroidism. This is usually an indicator because I test the entire thyroid panel. I do all the thyroid hormones. I check for antibodies. All of those were within normal range. So what this is telling me is that she is chronically under stress. And so I need to help support her stress response. And vitamin D, we run it as 125 OH is the name of it on the blood test is a 14. And if you recall back from a few slides ago, 14 is pretty darn low since we like to see it between 70 and 100. We also did a comprehensive GI panel. I like the company Genova is who we usually run ours from. They're really good. And it showed she had low bacterial abundance, meaning she was undergrowing a lot of the bacteria. She had low butyrate, which is a product of that healthy bacteria that might be there. She had low secretory IgA, which is a marker of the immune system within the gut. So her immune system has just been absolutely taxed. When I see that, that's also indicating to me that her gut integrity or the lining of her gut has been destroyed to some level. She had high protein which means that she wasn't breaking down and digesting her protein properly and low specific growth of a bacteria called anchormansia, which grows right at the lining of the digestive tract. So that's going to cause something called leaky gut, which is where the body sort of doesn't, it starts to get inflamed and things can escape outside of the tube of the gut and your immune system goes, whoa, banana or apple or whatever is supposed to be in the gut, you're, you're not in the gut. And it can lead to things like chronic inflammation or even autoimmune processes. So when I see that they have low amounts of that bacteria, I definitely think I've got to restore the integrity of that gut. So what did we do? So we started her with 10 rounds of immune focused IV nutrition therapy. Since I did a gut panel on her, I knew that she wasn't absorbing anything. So if I was giving her a bunch of vitamins, I would say IV therapy is really good. So here's your baseline for health. Our goal is to be in optimal health. And in her case, she was low ba below baseline. So just to even get her out of the hole, I had to replete all those vitamins just to get her body to repair. For instance, I had to just give her vitamin C B vitamins, magnesium, calcium, all these trace minerals, because her gut wasn't absorbing well enough. So it would have taken me forever to start to get her to feel better unless I just put it straight in her system. So we did 10 rounds of an immune focused IV nutrition therapy. She came in once a week for 10 weeks and we just gave her an IV as we were working some of this other stuff. At my office, I practice something called neuro emotional technique. And that's used to help reset emotional stress response within the nervous system. Uh, acupuncture, all, almost all my patients get acupuncture or a regimen of acupuncture. It's amazing for helping with pain, resetting the nervous system response, helping with stress, helping with anxiety, hormones. I mean, acupuncture is amazing for everything. Working really deeply on repairing her gut, increasing her movement, Part of increasing her movement was that I had to help. She had a, she had sprained her ankle really badly and her knee. And she was having so many problems with that, that it, it was preventing her from moving. It was too painful. 
So I'm also certified in something called regenerative injection therapy, uh, which uses a combination of a numbing agent and dextrose. And I go into the joints and it's, it will actually regenerate and repair the joints. So we did some of that on her and it was like night and day. She's like, my knee feels amazing. Then we started to get her moving and grooving and she was doing great. She responded really well to herbal and homeopathic drainage remedies. Um, we also obviously increased her vitamin D intake. We put her on a, a mushroom complex. Mushrooms are incredibly good at helping support the immune system. We eliminated sugar, dairy, and we focused on low carbohydrates. We increased vegetable and fiber intake, and we did something called intermittent fasting or circadian rhythm eating, where we started to have her take periods of time because we're trying to help her gut as well, where her gut could rest and repair. And this is really important for people who are having insulin resistance or problems with blood sugar regulation. This was an awesome case. So I didn't actually put the results, but I'll tell you, I've been seeing her for a few years. We did not do this all at once. It, this is, I'm telling you her entire plan and, and just one slide, but she's doing so awesome. She's down about, I think when I just saw her last week. So she's down 60 pounds from when I first started seeing her, she's moving. She is exercising on a daily basis. She is being bold in her life, which is so inspiring and so great because she's taking chances now because she feels strong and she feels healthy enough to do it. She has no more swollen lymph nodes. She has not had an infection in years. She still does get some seasonal allergies because there's still an exhaustive process that we're trying to work out on her to some degree, but she doesn't have to take any more of the prescription uh, Sudafed or any of this uh, hydroxyzine, which is what she was on. She might have to take a Claritin, you know, during the springtime. She's, I mean, she is just thriving. She's one of my favorite patients. So this is what's possible with the work that we do. It's, it's so, so exciting. I have references for all the things that I talked about. I tried to condense it as much as possible. There's so much to say about this topic, but I think the importance is, is how interconnected the body is. So it's not just the immune system. It's not just the mood. It's not just the gut. It's all of those things in combination. And that's really where naturopathic doctors thrive because we're really trained to look at those things. So here's some of my references. And the question was, what, uh, what do I love about naturopathic medicine? I love flexibility. I get to do a lot of things. I am definitely a business person. So I love owning my own business. I love being an entrepreneur. I love building content. I love sharing this information with people of how, you know, we have so many options of how we can practice. We have regulation within our, our field but not to the point of that it stifles our creativity. I still feel like we get a lot of creativity. We have a lot of tools to use within our practice. We don't, we're not handed a protocol, which when you're in medical school is really frustrating. You're like, just tell me what to do. But what you actually find when you're in practice is that you have a lot of leeway, that there's lots of ways to solve that one problem that you have, or that one and, and being able to have all those tools in your tool, toolbox is really great. Our profession allows us to think outside of the box. We're definitely, we're definitely our own brand. <laughs> we're, we're science. We're a little bit of woo-woo. We're a little bit of all those things. And it's, it's really been amazing for my personality because I am all those things. I'm a total nerd on one hand, but I'm also really deeply connected with the people that I work with on a spiritual level. Like we're we, we, we get into the muck and, and, and really it's amazing to be able to coach them through not only their health, but teaching them how that health then affects the decisions that they make for the rest of their lives. It's really amazing. Our medicine, I want you guys to know if you guys are thinking about going into medicine, if you're a patient, if you are a current doctor, I want you to know our medicine is so valuable. It is so valuable. I think a lot of docs, when they first get out in practice, especially naturopathic docs, they feel like they don't know anything. And I want to say, know your value. Please, please charge what you're worth. 
we have health coaches charging $300 an hour. And I have colleagues of mine charging $60 an hour. That's not okay. Like we, we take the time, we put our heart and soul into this medicine. Please just value what we do. It's, it's really amazing. And what else did I want to say? I wanted to say that we need to work as a profession on being more cohesive. And I think AANMC, I was just telling Dr. Yanez before this, I'm like, I wish I would have known about this before I went in. I like wrote to the school or emailed them and asked for a brochure. Like that is how I learned about it. Like a friend of mine mentioned it in passing. And I, I'm, I'm loving seeing all, some of my colleagues have Instagram followers and Facebook and really getting the message out about what we're capable of doing as doctors so that we could support each other and really just raise our standard at the same time of excellence because the medicine and the philosophy of what we practice is, is so, so important. So that's what I love about it. That was a really long answer. So future plans, what am I working on? I am actually working on a book right now. I have no idea what it's titled, but it is basically everything that I love about this medicine, the truth about what you're not getting from conventional medicine, uh, you know, pearls, things like that. I am on chapter 11 of 17. So my goal was to have it finished by the end of the year, but I think I'm going to have to go into the first part of the year just a little bit. Um, I am going to continue to put out great quality content. I am building up my Instagram presence. I have a, a series of videos that are getting released on my Facebook and, or not my Facebook, my, um, YouTube channel. I'm going to start a podcast next year. So I'm working on a lot of things right now. I want to increase the revenue of our clinic. I want to bring on another staff member, maybe a coach another a health coach, an ND, another acupuncturist. I, I have one doctor who works for my clinic right now. We have a full-time medical assistant. We have front office staff, a uh, possible second location, but that's up in the air. Um, what do I think the field of naturopathic medicine will look like in 10 to 20 years? You know, the sky is the limit. I think as long as we get our voices out there, create cohesion within our world and create a professional message that's a message of unity and really just doubling down on what our philosophy actually is. Like it's nothing to be ashamed of. Our philosophy is amazing. And I think the sky's the limit. And as long as we can get out and I was telling Dr. Yanez, like we have to get our docs out on platforms, talking about what we do, having pride in our medicine. And then I think we'll, we'll be great. So that's it. Thank you so much. If you guys need to follow me, find me, ask me questions, here's my contact information. Uh, I have a really awesome newsletter that I put out uh, just a few times a month, but you'll get access. We have master classes that we share with anybody who is on our email list. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, that's the link to get on our email list, uh, Facebook Train Wellness, and my Instagram is where I'm most active. It's dr.danny.lockwood. And I put out, I've been putting out daily videos of tips and everybody's been loving them. Sometimes it's just me shooting from the hip. And I hope this was really helpful to you. Um, please feel free to reach out and I will, I'd love to hear from you. So I think I'm going to hand it back over to Dr. Yanez. I don't know if there was anything else I needed. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, before we go to question and answer, and thank you for using the Q&A box for your questions, um, I just wanted to let you know that if you have any additional questions after the end of this webinar, please feel free to reach out to us at info at aanmc.org. And uh, next slide. I think this was, oh, here we go. And, uh, and also wanted to let you know about two upcoming events after the holidays. Uh, so we have an event in January featuring uh, current students and I believe one or two recent grads uh, talking about balancing family life and school. Uh, that is a common question we get. How do you 
how do you balance it all? How do you balance life and, and school and work? Uh, so we'll be covering that in January. And then uh, we'll have with us Dr. Christian Gonzalez speaking on uh, environmental medicine and healthy cleaning types of things. How do you keep your home clean in a way that doesn't have too many environmental toxins? So some of the things Dr. Lockwood uh, discussed earlier about lotions and and the different types of chemicals in our environment. That's what we'll be talking about in February. So uh, super excited to have those. Uh, so you can uh, go to whichever slide you want, Dr. Lockwood. So I'm gonna start off with some questions. So the first one was, what app are you using for yoga? We had a few oh, people uh, wanna know about I that. Have one. I, I downloaded, I'm a big Audible person. So um, it's called Rise and Shine Yoga. It was like free, yeah, Rise and Shine Yoga Flow. I love them because you buy them once and, and there's like 12 of them. And the longest one on there, I think is 28 minutes. It's on Audible. Yeah, and I'll also share, uh, and in the movement thing, you know, this pandemic has definitely made moving a little bit more challenging, especially for people who are home with children doing school. Uh, and so I, I've been, going on YouTube and finding like a 10 minute video for something, or, you know, there are so many yep. quick videos out there that even if you don't want to do an app necessarily, uh, you can find free exercise videos. I've got a, a kettlebell and some weights and, you know, some stretching bands and you can do a 10 minute, you know, 10 minute stretch and exercise or move your body uh, pretty easily now without having to, you know, buy a subscription or what have you. So that's yeah, another option. And I think I think people have this idea that it has to be an hour every single day and it doesn't. I do most of my workouts in under 15 minutes. So I have another app that I use that it's a subscription, but it's only five bucks a month called mamastrong.com. And that gives you a hit workout. And she uses things like cans and a belt and like, you know, just things that you'll find around the house. So I like quick, easy workouts because that's all I have time for. Yeah, it, it's, it, it is, um, you know, you, you do what you can and you fit it in, but I think ultimately it's got to fit in with your lifestyle to, to mm -hmm. be a longevity thing. So, you know, some folks can make that commitment and do an hour. And, you know, for me, it's like five minutes, 10 minutes, if I can <laughs> throw in some stretching or squats or things here and there. So uh, there was a question about uh, vitamin D. So there were a number of questions actually kind of framing around vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, I know you mentioned briefly optimal levels. Uh, one thing I, I didn't hear that also is prevalent, you know, based on being in the Pacific Northwest where there is limited sunlight uh, at, during part of the year. And then for people with different skin pigmentation, uh, yes. there are, you yeah. know, there are variances in your vitamin D level ex uh, absorption based on your pigmentation of your skin. And so uh, that is another consideration, but if you can share optimal vitamin D levels and then, uh, you know, tips on getting tested, let's say if a doc isn't really on board, which I would be surprised if a doctor wasn't running vitamin D if you were asking for it, but uh, you know, how, how, you, how you get a, a team together that will support your health goals. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So my optimal levels that I like are between 70 and 100 nanograms per deciliter. So um, that's usually how they're measured on the tests. Um, <clears throat> I like a chewable vitamin D or a liquid. It doesn't really matter what kind. Um, getting tested, if your doc isn't down for it, which some are not because it's expensive and it's hard for insurance to cover it. So then people end up paying. I had one patient who insisted on using their insurance and it cost them almost $400 to test the vitamin D levels, which is astronomical. Uh, we use a cash lab um, and we encourage our patients to use the cash lab because it can be up to 80 to 90% cheaper than using your insurance even because they're, they bypass that. And it costs about $25 to test your vitamin D um, the company is called Ulta Labs, which you can also order yourself. You don't need a doctor to actually order it in most states. Um, so that, that would be a great resource, I think, for people. There's, I think there's another company called Direct Labs as well that could work, but we use Ulta Labs, which they're great. Um, what was the other thing? Uh, yes, skin, darker skin pigmentation uh, would be a risk factor for low vitamin D. Also, Obesity and diabetes are risk factors for low vitamin D. Uh, in the reference section, I have studies 
you know, showing what that is. I, I think I kind of breezed over it a little bit because I was worried about time, but um, but yeah, absolutely. There are people who are at a higher risk factor for that low vitamin D. All right, I was muted. Uh, thank you so much for that mm -hmm. response. Uh, so uh, can you speak a little bit about the GI panel that you ran and uh, you know, there, there were just a little, a few questions about that as well. Yeah, so we work with a company uh, called Genova Labs. Uh, they're out of North Carolina, I think. They're um, test kits that we order in our office. You have to be a physician to get them usually, or you have to have a physician order them for you, but they will run a, com a comprehensive, they, they're, it's called a comprehensive GI panel. Um, which will test for what your microbiome is. So they'll tell you what's actually growing in your gut. They'll test for bacterial infections. They'll test for parasites. Uh, they'll test to see if the last portion of estrogen processing. So sometimes people will come in for hormone issues and I want to test their hormones. And I also want to test their gut because to get rid of that old estrogen, you need a certain specific part of your gut to be working. Um, they're, they're super awesome. That's actually one of my favorite tests. It gives you a ton of information. Um, but Genova is the company that we use for that. Um, there's also a really good panel through doctors data is another company that we'll use sometimes as well. Um, yeah. Thank you. And we're not endorsing any one company over no. another, but just, you know, just kind of to have a ballpark that there are a number of companies that do this out for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, when, when finding, uh, there's a question about selecting good vitamins and supplements. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I feel like I almost had to go to medical school to really understand this and understand okay, if I am going to have an herb, is this the correct species of herb to do the thing that I want to do? So working with somebody who has some knowledge around that is really the way to, to do it. Um, I use a couple of companies that have certification built into them. So I use a lot of physician line companies. Um, I'm looking for testing to see if they've tested for herbicides, pesticides, uh, I'm, t I'm looking to see if they've tested for something called bioavailability, which is going to be something when you actually take it, is it doing what it says it's going to do? Like for instance, a probiotic, if it says there's 1 billion, whatever in it, we want to make sure that it's been tested, that it's going to deliver that 1 billion to the small intestine or the large intestine or wherever we're trying to get it to. So working with companies that really certify their products, test their species, um, you know, so I look into what their, their standards are. Um, there's a couple of distributors that are pretty good. Um, we use a distributing platform called Fullscript for our patients. We also use Emerson Ecologics. Um, they actually don't allow anybody on there who hasn't been tested for some of those things, but it's worth just looking at a, per, at a company's website to see how they're testing products and what's the quality and standard that they're testing them at. But I'll tell you what, if you're, if you're a layman who hasn't had any training in herbs and nutrition and all of that kind of stuff, it is really hard to navigate it. And then you end up just taking products that aren't being absorbed correctly or, or used correctly. And I think that's where getting some coaching from somebody who's trained in this kind of stuff is, is very helpful. Thank you. Uh, so is there anything you wish you knew before going to ND school? That's a question I get sometimes too. It's, it's, it's a good one. I don't think I realized how hard it was going to be. <laughs> I, I think the, also because I ended up, I'm very ambitious. So I was like, I'm going to do a doctorate and a master's degree at the same time, you know, and it was, it was, it was very hard on me emotionally, physically, um, it takes a lot of endurance. It takes a lot of self-care and strategic reset as you're going through different quarters within the program. It was, and, and I had been through dental hygiene school. So I thought, oh, I, I can, I can handle this. But you know, the truth is it, it, it does, it, it's a dedication. It, it really is a dedication. The other thing that I think I wish I would have known was how 
you really do need to have a bit of an entrepreneurial mindset. We still don't, unfortunately, have enough positions after we graduate where you can just scoot right into this well-paying job, right? So sometimes you have to, not sometimes, all the times, you, you have to forge your own, own road and make your own connections. You know, if, find a clinic, find a mentor right away, you know, start um, talking to other docs about what they're doing, especially if they have a practice that you like and really build those connections because that's going to be what's going to get you a job, you know, on, on the back end. Thank you. Um, how long have you been practicing? I'm coming up on six years. Yeah. And then it was six years in school. So I feel like I've been doing, I've been doing this a lot longer than six years, but yeah, it's been, I'm coming up on six years now. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I know you, you spoke quite a bit about vitamin D and uh, the role in health. Uh, and you, you did touch a little bit about maybe some of the things that we see in response to low vitamin D levels. Can you speak a little bit more to that and kind of, you know, what, what is this picture? And, and obviously that's one piece of the puzzle. It's not the whole puzzle, but, uh, people tend to kind of get focused on certain aspects of, of things. So thank you. Yeah, I think vitamin D is just the easiest vitamin that you can pick out, but I really tried to emphasize that there is other vitamins that are necessary for a healthy immune system. But definitely when we're talking about the connection, when we're connecting all of those dots, vitamin D does play that vital role. Um, with vitamin D itself, uh, let's see, I have, some good research right here. Um, we're seeing a lot of malabsorption issues. So like, even if you're taking the vitamin D, if your gallbladder is not working, if you don't have enough stomach acid, you're not absorbing that vitamin D. And then there's a process within the actual bacteria of the gut itself that helps to process and utilize that vitamin D, right? And what we're seeing is if you have any comorbid um, factors like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, um, autoimmune disease, you're actually using up more vitamin D. So you're actually required more vitamin D than what is even maybe available. Um, so yeah, there's, there's lots of things. And then medications like um, dexamethasone, uh, which is spironolactone, which people use a lot for PCOS. They actually, um, they use up an enzyme called uh, cytochrome P450, and that helps with activating and then breaking down vitamin D so that it can be like taken out of the body. So we might see an altered vitamin D status if people are on a bunch of medications. So there's lots of reasons why people are low in vitamin D, aside from the fact that we really don't spend enough time outside. So vitamin D, how do we get it? Cause people are like, why I'm outside. No, you need to have direct sunlight in your eyes, no sunglasses, no sunscreen on bare chested in the middle of the day in order to absorb the amount of vitamin D that you need on a daily basis. Like who is doing that? Who is actually doing that? Maybe people in Hawaii who get to go surf in the middle of the day, but not me for sure. You know, sitting in front of a computer under lights indoors all the time. Yes, I, I will say, I will say, actually, I forced my son yesterday to take a break outside. And I said, take off your shirt, <laughs> you know, because it, it yes. literally we're Now we are in California, so you can do yes. that. But <laughs> it's very happen. chilly right now in Portland. Do not recommend taking off Do not your shirt. Re recommend doing that in most parts <laughs> of the country. Um, but right. it, exactly, you know, it was, it's one of those things where, you know, I notice our skin's getting pale and it's okay, time to, you know, take some supplements and get it naturally as safely as possible, obviously with recommend, you know, recognizing your skin tone and your skin cancer risks and, and all of that. But yes, that <laughs> just made Absolutely. me chuckle. Absolutely. Um, did I answer the question you were asking? I felt like I went off on a little bit of a tangent, but did I get it? Uh, no, no, I think you did. Thank you. Um, so you spoke a little bit about, um, you know, what you, what you thought about before naturopathic school, uh, what do you think is important for doctors in like, what, what's the, what's the one or two things you think is most important for doctors in finding the area that they, or students finding the area that they will excel in? Like, how did you go about 
getting your niche and your specialization and the things that you love about practicing now? Two things. Number one, go after the thing that you can't stop studying. Like if you can't stop studying it and in your free time, you're still studying it. That's probably the thing that you need to specialize in that you need to focus on. Right. I am so fascinated with very specific things within my practice. Number one, I am so fascinated with human relationship and the ability to, for people to change. So I'm very interested in change psychology. What does it take to get somebody who has these certain habits and get them to completely do a 180 and start practicing these other habits. Like that is very, very fascinating to me. Why? I think because I've hacked it within myself. You know, I, I feel like I was just this unconfident, anxious person who had these issues. I also have something called McArdle's disease. So I was having body pain all the time and didn't know what it was. And I was so, I just, I dug into the research. And so for me, I've started to double down on these things. Like, how do I deal with chronic pain? How do I deal with injuries? How do I deal with emotions? How do I repair mood? How do I settle out anxiety? And then finding all those webs and weaves. And my husband makes fun of me because he's like, even when you're off, you're never off. You're always reading something and learning something. And that's why I'm saying it's like, if you're a continual student, you'll be an excellent doctor because it will require you to continue to learn, to be up on the latest and greatest and, and what's going on. So that's number one. Number two, and somebody said this to me when I was in school and I didn't believe it. My mentor said to me, your patients will find you. And that has been so true. I've just been in practice, going after the thing that I'm interested in. And all of a sudden I started just getting thyroid patients. Like I see thyroid like all day long and gut stuff all day long and anxiety all day long. So they really do find you as well. Cause they're, I don't know if it's just like the, the resonant frequency of like my brain thinking of the things, but I've also never thought that I would work in traumatic. I do a lot of traumatic brain injury, a lot of ADHD. I never thought I would do that but, but I'm pretty darn good at it and I like it. And so, yeah, they'll find you. So that's the second rule. Well, thank you so very much. I, I really appreciate your time. We're coming just right up on the hour right now. So I just wanted to personally say thank you for sharing your brain with all of the uh, students and folks here today. And a uh, personal thank you from me for joining us uh, for this webinar. And for those of you joining at home, uh, we will be sending out the recording for the webinar shortly, hopefully in the next day or so. Uh, so thank you again for coming and we hope to see you at another event. Uh, we hope you all have a safe and healthy holiday and uh, that next year is a better one. I just wanted to say thank you to Dr. Yanez and the whole team, Connie over at ANMC for having me and thinking of me. I've really enjoyed it and wishing everybody a happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lockwood right. so much. Bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.